Hello, I'm Rob, a Washington DC tour guide here at the Lincoln Memorial. And I wanna take you on a virtual bike ride down the Mount Vernon Trail to Old Town Alexandria. So let's switch over to the GoPro on the front of my bike and we'll get started. Ah, the Lincoln Memorial, the most visited and most popular site in all of Washington DC. Welcome, I'm Rob. I'm gonna be taking you on a virtual bike ride over the next half hour or so. But first, let's take a peek at the reflecting pool, of course, the companion to the Lincoln Memorial. I have been doing some virtual live walks lately here on the YouTube channel, and I really like to ride a bike. And there are some things that are a little too far for a walk. And so a virtual bike ride is something that I've been wanting to do for a while. I actually did one back in the spring. I did a virtual bike ride around East Potomac Park during peak bloom. So if you liked that video, let me know. Or if you like this video and wanna see more virtual bike rides, let me know that you're interested and what you would like to see because I always take that feedback into account. So we're going to be leaving Washington DC now, going across Arlington Memorial Bridge and then heading down to Old Town Alexandria. But let me tell you a bit about the day I'm recording this and what time it is, as you can see. You could probably guess it's rush hour. It is late afternoon on a weekday in September. Now, today, on the day I'm recording this, we are in a stretch of gloriously nice weather days. And I have to say, in Washington, D.C., these can be rare, so it's important when you get a nice weather day to take advantage of it, and I am definitely doing that today. So temperature today is in the mid-70s Fahrenheit. We have light winds. We have light humidity. It is the late afternoon. It's sunny. As you can see, the sun is directly in front of me as I head west across Memorial Bridge. So Memorial Bridge. It's the bridge that connects Washington, D.C. to Arlington Cemetery. It was first proposed in the 1880s, but it didn't actually open until quite a bit later in the 1930s. It's named Memorial Bridge, but can you guess what it's actually memorializing? Those buried at Arlington Cemetery would be the obvious guess. Ironically, the reason it took decades to build in the first place is because of political fights and bickering about who it should memorialize. So two of the front runners were Abraham Lincoln and Ulysses S. Grant. Now remember that when this bridge was proposed, this was long before the Lincoln Memorial as we know it today even existed. So one of the original points of consideration was whether the bridge would have a draw span that could let ships through on the way to the port of Georgetown. And in the beginning, it did. However, the draw span was permanently closed in the 1960s because another bridge built to the north, the Theodore Roosevelt Bridge, did not have this feature and ships couldn't pass through anyway. So at that point, what was the point of having a drawbridge on this one? Some recent renovations have completely removed it. So now the bridge is permanently fixed in this position. And if you visited DC sometime in the past decade, you might remember this bridge was under heavy construction. It was actually in really bad structural shape and needed a lot of work to get it back up to par. So we've made it across the bridge and now it's a little twisty and turny to get back onto the Mount Vernon Trail, which is what I'm going to take all the way in to Alexandria. When you ride this trail, there are some street crossings, at grade street crossings, which means people are going to be driving on one of the roads or the parkway and you have to cross. So you have to be very careful about this as much as I would love to think that everyone is respectful of rights of way and everything like that. You do have to take care of yourself first and be careful when you're riding on this trail. So we're kind of making a bit of a twisty, turny little route back towards the river. You can see the Washington Monument off in the distance over there. And then we will be back onto the trail. So what is this big street, this big road here anyway? This is called the George Washington Parkway or the GW Parkway. And almost the entirety of this ride is going to be in this parkway. The entire parkway is about 25 miles long it runs from McLean, Virginia to Mount Vernon, basically parallel the entire way along the Potomac River. 
Back in the 1800s, traveling out to George Washington's home, Mount Vernon, was considered a bit of a patriotic pilgrimage. And because there wasn't really a single road that went out there from D.C., it was actually kind of a challenging thing to do, which I find interesting, but also when you know about history, not all that surprising. We didn't have paved roads. We didn't have the interstate highway system until relatively recently in U.S. history. So for a long time, for the majority of U.S. history, to travel a long distance was quite treacherous. And so I suppose it was kind of a pilgrimage, you could say, to go just out to Mount Vernon, which nowadays we wouldn't consider to be particularly far, but back then, I suppose it was. So the highway portion of the parkway was finished first around the same time as Memorial Bridge opened in the 1930s, and the parkway was built in several phases from the 1920s all the way till the 1970s, and nowadays it's part of the National Park System. So similar to the National Mall and many of the parks in D.C., it is under the jurisdiction of the National Park Service. In the old days, a parkway, and the reason it's named a parkway rather than a highway or a freeway, is because it's supposed to be a scenic drive. This might be hard to believe nowadays, but when cars were new, they were, there were places that you could take your car and just drive through them. Maybe you had a convertible, maybe you put the windows down, but you would just get in the car and you would drive and you would enjoy the scenery. I think the reason it's hard to imagine this nowadays is because cars are often used for commuting, driving to and from work, driving to and from errands, things that are generally considered rather unpleasant. So the idea of just getting in your car and going for a scenic drive definitely a bit old-fashioned. These days, people still use it for, you know, a nice view, perhaps, and on the rare occasion that I drive on the GW Parkway, I think, wow, this is so much nicer, so much more pleasant than, say, the Beltway, but as a way of getting from uh, point A to point B, it is admittedly fairly efficient. So we are passing now the Merchant Marine, which was up on the left, which is a tribute to the Merchant Marine, and that is a bit of a an odd, not odd, but an unknown branch of the military. So the Merchant Marine actually consists of civilian ships and crews who, during times of war, act as a lifeline. They transport military goods and supplies, and so, for example, in World War II, the Merchant Marines suffered a higher casualty rate than any of the actual armed forces, losing approximately 1 out of 26 mariners. So the Merchant Marine has historically been less recognized compared to other branches of the military. So the memorial that we have here in the Parkway is an important reminder of their service and sacrifice during war. Now up ahead is, or actually we just passed, the 14th Street Bridge. And it's a bit confusing to say this because the 14th Street Bridge is not just a single bridge, it's a complex of bridges. It consists of five separate bridges that carry road traffic, rail traffic, and pedestrians. And if I was to bike across it to go back to D.C., I would actually be using specifically the George Mason Memorial Bridge, which is what carries the southbound lanes of I-395 out of D.C. It also carries the pedestrian and bike traffic in both directions. Now, if you were to take an Amtrak train from Union Station south say to Richmond or Williamsburg or even farther south than that, you would take the rail portion of the 14th Street Bridge. And so if I was to bike across it, I would wind up right at the Jefferson Memorial. And in that sense, it is actually very convenient. I crossed over Memorial Bridge, but the 14th Street Bridge is a good crossing as well. Now, when it, when it opened, it was known as the Long Bridge. It was built, which was built in 1809. It played a critical role during the Civil War, serving as a vital supply line into Washington, D.C. Unfortunately, a much darker moment came in 1982 when Air Florida Flight 90 crashed immediately after takeoff from Reagan National Airport, striking the bridge, killing passengers, crew, and people who were on the bridge crossing at that moment. Because, this, because of this crash, 
there are actually a lot more safety requirements now, specifically for winter flights, especially when it comes to de-icing on freezing days. This trail, like I said, is in the George Washington Parkway. It is called the Mount Vernon Trail. And that is because if you ride it all the way to the end, you will eventually wind up in Mount Vernon, which is George Washington's home. Now we are currently at Gravelly Point, which is just to the north of Reagan National Airport. It is famously known as one of the best places in all of the United States to watch planes take off and land up close. And due to its proximity to the airport, planes fly extremely low over the park. It creates an amazing experience for people who are really into aviation, but also photographers, families, picnickers, people who just like something a little bit different. You can also get very nice views of the Washington DC skyline from here, including the Washington Monument and the Capitol Building. Now, to be completely transparent with you, and there's the airport up there on the left, you can take a sneak peek there. To be completely honest with you, the views are better riding in the other direction, so riding from Alexandria towards DC, and I will be doing that on my way back to DC, but I won't be recording that. Just giving you a heads up if you're thinking, mm, these views are okay, but they don't look that stunning, they don't look that spectacular. The best views are actually in the opposite direction. So Gravelly Point Park, it also offers large fields that are perfect for picnicking, playing catch, playing frisbee, casual sports, anything that you would do in a big grassy open field. And just so you know, I'm doing this ride on a weekday afternoon during rush hour, so crowds right now are fairly low. But on the weekend, it gets much busier here, especially when the weather is nice. So we are going to Go around a few curves here, and then we will be approaching the airport. So, like I said, this is Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport. That is the official name. You can see it here up on the left behind this big fence. And yes, I know locals don't call it that. And I'm going to explain why, and I'm also going to explain why, for the purpose of Trip Hacks DC videos, I often do call it that. But first, this airport opened in 1941 as Washington National Airport. Congress added Ronald Reagan onto the name in 1998 for, frankly, political reasons. And because this was an act of Congress that locals didn't ask for, and honestly, many didn't want, a lot of locals, for that reason, resisted the name change and still do to this day. So when you speak to locals, they will often refer to this airport simply as national or by the three letter airport code DCA. So there are three airports in the Washington DC area. There's this one. There's also Dulles Airport, which has the code IAD. And then there's Baltimore Washington, Air Baltimore Washington International Airport, which has the code and which people refer to as BWI. So that's the reason why Locals will call it what they call it. The reason why I will usually refer to it as Reagan National Airport is because for the benefit of tourists who might know it only as the, the official name, I wanna make sure that everyone understands and there's not any confusion because at the end of the day, the purpose of Trip Hacks DC is for helping locals and, oh, sorry, for helping tourists, for helping visitors and that is what I'm trying to do. But you will never hear me, for example, refer to it simply as Reagan because that's not the formal official name. If I do refer to it, it will be by the formal name, Reagan National Airport. Okay, so with that out of the way, this is probably the most convenient airport in all of the United States. And I know there are some airports that are technically a little bit closer to their down cities downtowns, but the reason why I am confident in saying that this is the most convenient airport in the United States is because this is the only one that has a direct metro connection right next to the terminal that will take you right into downtown DC. So I think that is extremely convenient. And personally, I will say, if I hit all my connections right, I can go from door, the door of my home, 
to gate, the gate of my plane, in less than 30 minutes using Metro. Now, of course, this means waiting only a minute or two for a train and a relatively short TSA line. But when you think about that, that is pretty amazing. And that is why I would say it's the most convenient airport. It's also one of the most architecturally beautiful airports in the country with the Great Hall being especially nice. And I'm actually going to Photoshop on a photo of that right now in case you've never been in there before. Now, unfortunately, a few years ago, they changed the TSA screening area so you now can only see the Great Hall if you are able to pass through security. Now, due to its proximity to downtown Washington, D.C., its sensitive location near the federal government, near the Capitol, near the White House, etc., DCA operates under some of the strictest security and flight path restrictions in the country. So pilots follow a unique approach known as the river visual approach, which requires them basically to fly directly over the Potomac River all the way down to avoid restricted airspace. Now, I am friends with a few pilots. I have met a few pilots as a tour guide over the years who have signed up for my tour. And what's interesting is for pilots, this airport is either their favorite to fly into because it's a challenge, because it's fun, or their least favorite because it requires the most amount of work and you kind of have to manually fly the plane a little bit more than you would at other airports. Now, the airport also is basically over capacity. Because it only has one active runway that can operate at a time, we had a big controversy recently over adding more flights to this airport. Congress wanted to add more flights. You can imagine if you're a Congress member or a senator from a state that doesn't have a direct flight, wouldn't it be nice to get one? So the airport is basically over capacity now, and the fear is that delays could get even worse. Now, if you look really closely off in the distance, you can see a metro train traveling away from the airport. So yes, metro is extremely convenient. And if you're curious, you can also bike to the airport. Yes, there was a turnoff that I passed that if you had turned off, you could dock a Capital Bike Share bike at the airport, or you could ride your own bike to the airport. They now have secure lockup facilities for bikes at the airport. And you might be thinking, Rob, who would bike to the airport? Well, I've biked to the airport. So granted, it requires a very, very, very specific situation, one where you're not carrying large amounts of luggage. For me, that would be something like a one-day trip, maybe an overnight or even a weekend trip where I'm traveling with just one backpack. I am a light packer, so I am able to take a weekend trip with only one backpack. And I'll be honest, it's very convenient. If you do the Capital Bike Share option, you can dock the bike and then pass. You kind of have to go through a parking garage, which is a little confusing the first time you do it. But after that, you know where everything is. It's very, very convenient and cool to say that you biked to the airport. Now, we are getting close to the intersection here with Four Mile Run. And despite the name, Four Mile Run is actually a nine-mile stream that runs through Arlington and portions of Alexandria. The origin of the name Four Mile Run is actually unclear and debatable, but it was probably either named after an early town that's in this area, or the surveyors took a measurement from a certain landmark, and that's how it got its name. But in any case, the stream and the surrounding land played a key role in early agriculture and transportation in Northern Virginia. The Four Mile Run Trail runs alongside the stream, and it's a popular destination that you would take a bike on if you decided to bike the trail, or if you wanted to go for a walk or a stroll. And it's actually a great way to get to various parts of Arlington and Alexandria without having to ride on city streets. So that's typically what I would use it for. Now let me get back to talk about the trail itself, because I've been on this for nearly 20 minutes now and haven't even fully explained the Mount Vernon Trail other than to say it goes all the way to Mount Vernon. The trail today runs from Roslyn, which is slightly to the north of where I started, all the way to the south to Mount Vernon, 
with a small break in Alexandria where you do have to take city streets to connect between the sections of the trail. And that is actually where I am going to end my ride today is at the Old Town Waterfront Park. And I'll show you the spot where you do have to kind of exit the trail and do a bit on street. So in total, it's about 17 miles long, which is slightly shorter than the entire length of the GW Parkway. And this type of trail is called a multi-use trail, which means it's used for people doing lots of different types of activities, which includes, but is not limited to, walking, hiking, running, and biking. In theory, a trail like this is supposed to have a chill vibe, allow lots of different types of people to come out and enjoy nature. In my experience, it can sometimes get taken over by bike riders who wanna ride really fast and they get upset when people aren't going really fast or they're in the way, but you're gonna see people on the trail, maybe not during rush hour on a weekday, but definitely on a weekend, you're gonna see people walking their dogs. You're gonna see people pushing strollers. And so, in my opinion, when you come out on the trail, just come out for some nice recreation. You don't have to be training for a triathlon or a big road race or anything like that. So before Mount Vernon, in fact, opened, really serious cyclists would just ride on the parkway with itself, mixed in with traffic. And actually on Sundays before this trail opened, one lane of traffic would be roped off uh, because there were so many cyclists on the road who would just come out to ride on the weekend. So interesting history, I think. But nowadays, if you're going to come ride it now, just come out, be chill have a nice time. You can get from Washington DC to Old Town on this trail fairly quickly, which I think is pretty interesting to be honest. Now I also wanna talk about where I am right now. This is called, and I'm, I'm probably going to mispronounce this, so if there are any locals <laughs> who know the correct way, Dangerfield Island, which is the island located just to the south of the airport and to the north of Old Town Alexandria. And despite its name, Dangerfield Island, it's tech, well, okay, technically it's not an island anymore, uh, though it was once surrounded by marshes and the Potomac River. There have since been land reclamation efforts. Uh, the island is one of the earliest known colonial settlements in Northern Virginia, and it was named after the Dangerfield family, who were prominent local landowners in the 18th century. So the land was initially used for farming and trade, and during the colonial era, it served as a key transportation hub along the Potomac River. One of the main features of the island is the Washington Sailing Marina, which I've already passed, which offers facilities for boaters, including docks, boat rentals, sailing lessons, mostly in the summer. I know I'm gonna be posting this in the fall, so this might be out of season by the time you're watching it, but if you do come in the summer and you're interested in those types of activities, you can find them there at the marina. If not, there's also things like bird watching. There's lots of local wildlife because it is uh, a wetland, kind of a wetland area. So bird watchers often come here to try to observe everything from waterfowl, herons, ospreys, and other birds that are native to a river habitat. This is also because of the, I guess, wetland nature of the area where you will have to go on these wooden planks, which are personally not my favorite to bike on. It's a bit noisy, it's a bit bumpy. I'm actually using a relatively new to me GoPro. I, I think it's a generation old now. So we're gonna see how well it holds up. It is quite bumpy, I can feel, <laughs> Oof. but we'll see how the GoPro holds up. I do know in some of my testing that it did fairly well on the front of the bike. I had an old, old GoPro. I think it was the Hero 4. And I tried, I actually tried to record this ride one year ago and it was not successful because it was so bumpy and it just looked, the footage just looked awful. But the reason I tried to record this one year ago is because Metro was actually closed entirely for a decent amount of time south of the airport. And that was a time when I did not recommend folks who are visiting stay in Alexandria because the transportation situation was not great. But the reason I am recording this now is as a way of showing that it is possible to bike to Old Town, to Alexandria. It's actually not that far. 
I think of myself as a relatively medium speed <laughs> biker, as you might have noticed. I passed a few people. I've been passed by a few people, and so I'm neither fast nor slow, and I can make the ride from Lincoln to the Old Town waterfront in approximately half an hour, 35 minutes or so, which is actually not that long. So if you wanna go on a bike ride, or you just want to do something a little bit different as a way of getting around, this is definitely an option. Actually, with that said, let me talk a little bit about my overall philosophy towards biking in DC. I think biking is a great way to get around. If you've been watching or listening to Trip Hex DC for a long time, you might know because I say it all the time, it's actually one of my primary ways of getting around. And I often think back to my friend Brian, who was a guest in the early days of the Trip Hex DC podcast. And he described having a bike as having a cheat code for the city. If you ever played video games, you know, if you have a cheat code, it lets you do something in the game more easily. And I always think about that when he said it's a cheat code for the city because it is. I actually agree with him about that. You can get from point A to point B in many cases pretty efficiently. Now, it's not great for long distances, but for short distances, it's actually really great, really efficient. The cool thing is, unlike driving, unlike taking an Uber, I pretty much always know exactly how long it's going to take. I know it's going to take exactly 18 minutes to get from my home to the Lincoln Memorial, for example, on a bike. I know that if I was gonna call an Uber, it could take anywhere from 10 minutes to 40 minutes, depending on how long I had to wait, what time of day it was, whether there was traffic, whether there was road closures, there's just so many variables. And so that's one of the things that I think is really great. That said, I think biking in the city is not a great option for everyone. I think if you wanna do it, you need to have experience, you need to be a practiced urban cycler if you wanna use it for getting around. Now, that's not to say you shouldn't do it when you come to Washington, D.C., because we have lots of great leisurely bike rides like this one, aside from a few crossings where you do need to be careful. But once you've conquered those, it's pretty much smooth sailing all the way from D.C. to Alexandria, no traffic to compete with, no road raging drivers, just a nice trail and a good vibe. So I think this is a great option if you want to do a recreational ride or if you don't want to come all the way out here, you can just get a Capital Bike Share bike and poke around the National Mall. It's a big park. You could just get a bike and ride it around. The biggest disadvantage to Capital Bike Share is that you do have to be at least 16 years or older to use it. So it's not an option for families. It's not an option for kids. There is a bike rental company called Unlimited Biking that does have kids' bikes. So if you want a bike with the whole family, there are options, but Capital Bike Share, unfortunately, is not one of them. Now, if you don't have kids, you can actually take a Capital Bike Share bike all the way to Old Town because there are bike share docks all over the region, all over the DMV area. And so you could pick up your Capital Bike Share at the Lincoln Memorial. I even passed a bike share dock at the very beginning of the ride, ride it all the way down the trail, and then dock it at Old Town Alexandria once you arrive. And hey, if you don't want to bike back, you could take the metro back, you could take the water taxi back. There are so many options. I recorded an entire podcast episode about transportation options in DC that you should listen to if you're curious about this. So we are now in North Old Town. Old Town Alexandria is one of the oldest and most historic neighborhoods in the United States. I highly recommend this area if you're interested in history and specifically a walking tour of this area if you're interested in history. On the left, this is a park called Founders Park and we're gonna actually see some more of it as I continue down the street over here. This is an interesting area because in the 18th and 19th centuries, this site was used as a shipyard and a warehouse district. There were piers extending out in the Potomac River. North Old Town was actually a very industrial area for much of history. And maybe you noticed that when I was riding past on the trail, there was some very industrial looking buildings to the right. You had the river on the left, you had some industrial buildings on the right. There was that section with the fences that you ride through, which yeah, it's very industrial even to today. But over time, Alexandria's role as a major port city declined. This area kind of fell into disuse, into disrepair. And in the 1970s, the area was almost redeveloped for commercial purposes 
but a group of local residents. They got together, they banded together to save the waterfront from private development. They said, we don't want to have commercial space here. We want to have green space. And that is why now on the left, you have this beautiful park called Founders Park. We could certainly debate about whether that sort of activism is is good or bad, but it's what we have, it's what we got, and that's why you have the park that's there now. Another element to that old industrial era is the Torpedo Factory, which I'm going to be passing shortly, just to give you a heads up. The to- it's now the Torpedo Factory Art Center. Now, it was originally constructed in 1918, and during both world wars was used as a U.S. Naval Torpedo Station a facility that produced torpedoes for the war. It was a major, uh, it played a major role in the war efforts. But after the wars, the building was no longer used. We didn't need torpedoes anymore. And so in 1974, and here it is up on the left, that white building with the smokestack on top. In 1974, it was transformed into an arts center. And it is one of the earliest examples of an industrial space being repurposed for the arts. So now the center is designed to allow the public to interact with artists, ask questions, and even purchase artwork from their studios. And the artists who work at the Torpedo Factory are carefully selected through a juried process. So it is very, very well vetted. Let's take a turn here. We're heading towards the waterfront. The ride is nearly complete. And so before I get to my final spot, I just wanna say thank you for coming along on this ride with me. If you liked it, make sure to give the video a thumbs up. Make sure to leave me a comment. Let me know that you liked it. And make sure to leave any suggestions for future bike rides that you would like me to do. Because I love riding my bike. I love showing you around Washington, D.C. and the area. That's why I'm a tour guide. But I don't always know what people are most interested in seeing. So if you have an idea, let me know. And I'd like to get back on my bike and show you some different parts from that perspective. And as I say at the end of all of these, thanks for watching and enjoy your trip.